Hello, my name is Simon and welcome to the Retro News Roundup. To start this month, there was a news that Limited Run Games and Sunsoft plan to release a number of remastered retro titles in the coming months, starting with the Game Boy's Trip World for the Switch, PS4 and PS5. There will also be physical versions released for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. But in all honesty, I've just included this news as I have a short interview clip from the people at Limited Run Games that I can actually use, which I'll play for you right now. We're losing history on a daily basis, and it's a shame that there, there isn't a, a wider spread acceptance yet of the fact that we're losing this history. And everybody at Limited Run Games feels the exact same way about both preserving history and enhancing. Next up, some dude collected over 1,000 copies of Dragon Quest for the NES, and is eyeing up 2,500 copies. It's good to have aims in life. Let's start this section with the titles that have been released across both the PS4 and Switch because I'm lazy and demand convenience at all times. As usual, there was a stack of Arcade Archive titles. Rezon, Dig Dug 2, Cosmo Gang the Video, and Galaga 88. Then there were remakes of Final Fantasies 1 to 5, as well as Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection. The Switch got a few retro offerings of its own though, most notably the superb Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp, as well as IGS Classic Arcade Collection. Four Mega Drive games were also added on the console's online service. Pulseman, Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition, Kid Chameleon and Flicky, as well as the N64's Pokemon Stadium. The PS4 got Cell Damage HD, which I'm sure it already had, but hey ho, don't at me if this is wrong. Finally, the Evercade got a couple of new cartridges, Toa Plan Arcade 2, and the C64 Collection Volume 2, with the latter including many classics including... Oh... Oh no... Nothing to be found here this month. Anybody got anything? No wrong answers. What's that? Okay, I stand corrected. After a quiet couple of months, the 8-bit homebrew scene is back in force. There were seven Commodore 64 titles. Zeta Wing 2, Kick of the Spear, Adventure 1, Newsstand, Snake vs. Bomb 2, Space Station 23, and Lost Realms of Mercasada, Episode 2. And the ZX Spectrum topped that number with eight new games. Double Dragon 128K, ZX Snake, Jack Dragon, Broxolico, Cursed Demons of Walakaya, Laska Pij Aktif, Dungeon and Souls, and Sbot. Uninteresting fact, Cybot has been one of my many nicknames. There have been much worse ones, believe me. Moving swiftly on, three titles were made for the Amiga in April, Hop to the Top, Box 4, and Tenebra. Then to round off this section, Mr. Wong ambled towards the Amstrad CPC. You can now fire up Scorch on your Atari XLXE, Madhouse was admitted to the MSX2, and Dango Dash ran onto the Game Boy Color. Developer Rare's co-founder Tim Stamper teased that their never-released Dream 64 project for the N64 was at one stage a reality by sharing a picture of the development cartridge on Twitter. Stamper says that the footage he also shared was likely for a Nintendo show back in 1996. At least the pirate got used in Banjo-Tooie, huh? Only two English language translations were completed last month. The first for Oyaji Hunter Mahjong on the 3DO, the other for Go Go Ackman 2 on the SNES. That's all for this episode then, but thanks so much for watching. Your support is always hugely appreciated. Let's get this episode to over 100 likes again, yeah? Cheers. In any case, please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and please do stay safe. Seen you since we were in primary school together. It must be three years. <laughs>